I am Father Joseph Mukasa Muonge, promoter of the devotion to the Uganda martyrs, Kampala Archdiocese. When we talk about the Uganda martyrs, we should not forget to talk about the missionaries who turned them into what led them to accept dying for the faith. From their headquarters, or call it mother house in Algeria, via Marseille's port in France, Port Eden, Zanzibar, Bagamoyo and Ta Tabora, the five white fathers, missionaries, arrived at Kageye landing site south of the Lake Victoria in January 1879 and they were Livinac Leo, Leo Balbo, Ludovic Giraud and Simeon Ludel who more popularly called Mapera because the people used to hear him. Greeting brother, Amans, bonjour, f f mon frère. And uh, uh, the brother used to address him, greet in greeting, bonjour, mon père. People could not hear the words mon père. What they used to hear was ma père. Uh, that's how he turned into Mapera. We should not forget Brother Amans also. On the 17th of February 1879, two of the group of five arrived in the country to introduce themselves to Mutesa the First and the entire group and to seek permission to begin proclaiming the Word of God. After weeks, Father Ruder and Brother Amans held a meeting with the king at Lubaga Palace. The Kabaka allocated a piece of land to the missionaries at Lubia and promised 24 canoes to, go, to collect the other three who had remained behind south of the lake. And they arrived later on the 17th of June, 1879, Fathers Livinak, Balban Giro arrived at Kigungu, or called it Chetali. And after eight days, they joined their colleagues and made a sort of joy at Navulagala, joining him. Whom? Joining Father Mapera and Brother Amans. So they started work. The very first Mass in Uganda is said to have been celebrated at Nabulagala on the 25th of June, 1879, when the entire group had, had arrived at, or was settling at Nabulagala. And on the 25th of June, 1879, the following were baptized. The very first people to be baptized in Uganda. Paul Narubandwa, Peter Chononekadamulira, Joseph Luanga, and Leo Kadu. That was June, yeah, no, March, March the 27th, 1880. I'd like to emphasize this. The date was the 27th of March, 1880. Work is progressing now. Why? Because baptism continued. The second group, the second group comprised of those who were baptized on the 14th of May, 1880, and they were John Mary Fuke, Matthew Luanga Kirevu, Boniface Tezanyirwa, and Jacob Takirambu Dwe. None of those mentioned above got the opportunity to be martyred. 
But now here we are, on the 3rd of April, 1882, the following were baptized. Andrea Kahwa, Rukagua, Joseph Mukasa Badikudembe, Ha! And uh, those who are martyred, they were martyred. Joseph Mukasa on the 15th of November, 1885. And uh, Andrea Kagua on the 26th of May, 1886, at Munyonyo. Now, the next group comprised of those who were baptized on the 28th of May, 1882. And those were Matthias Murumba Kalimba, who died a martyr on the 30th of May, 1886, at uh, Old Kampala. Luke Banaba Kintu, oh, who was burnt to death at Namugongo on the 3rd of June, 1886. Then the following two did not go to the privilege, although they would have possibly wanted to die martyrs. John Baptist Chaguisiza and Cyprian Kamiya. Please take note. On the 8th of November 1882, for security reasons, the missionaries, our dear missionaries, had to flee the country and they shifted to Bukumbi, Tanzania. On the 8th, 8th of November 1882, they were not chased away, no, but for security reasons, they asked the then king to go. And uh, though they would have liked to go, they, said, they mentioned it to him because they had overheard of the impeding trouble. Yet, <coughs> their uh, leader, Cardinal Lavigiri, had told them, in case you sense something that could be avoided, something dangerous that could be avoided to save the lives of the people you are going to uh, proclaim the word of God too, please uh, move away immediately. And so they did. At times people say, he, Mutasa the first he chased them away. He didn't. They, when they asked him, he pretended to feel very sad. But inside, he was saying, oh, it's okay now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Remember, they returned on the 15th of July, 1885. Now, who was the leader between November 1885 and July? Ah, between November 1882 and July 1885. As soon as the missionaries left, those they left behind organized themselves to choose from amongst them leaders. And who became the leader? Joseph Mukasabalu Kudembe became the leader from the 12th, from the 12th of November 1882 to the 15th of July 1885. Because the missionaries left on Wednesday the 8th, November 1882, but the meeting took place on Sunday the 12th. And it was during this a big meeting that they organized a leadership from amongst themselves. By the way, on their return, they were surprised. They were very much surprised because the church had blossomed, had blossomed under the leadership of Joseph Mukasabali Kudembe. The Catholics were now at the top, followed by Protestants then followed by uh, Muslims. But the Catholics were at the top. 
while by the time the missionaries went, uh, Catholics were in the second place. But now the, the number uh, risen to whew, more than 8,000 8, Protestants, uh, is, is 6,000, 6, then pro, uh, 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 Muslims, 4,000 plus. Why Namugongo? Why? Namugongo and its surroundings for quite, a, quite long was a place marked with notoriety. Namugongo had even her own god. <laughs> and that was a frog. <laughs> a frog. And where the frog is said to have been is not well known. Near Kialwajara, there, it can still be spotted. But when Father Deeper was on his research work in, in, in the 1950s, he found it out that it was just a hearsay. The frog was never there. And what is said about the frog was that those who, you, who would be brought to Namugongo execution site, that's at the Protestant site today, they would be taken before the frog and, the, and they would tell the frog for what they were being taken to be killed. Because that, that uh, execution site at Namugongo had been there a hundred, a hundred years earlier. It had been put there by Kabaka Chiavagu. So the site was there. By the time the martyrs were executed there, the, the site had already been there more than a hundred years. That's why some people go wrong and they say Namugongo came, the name Namugongo came eh, because the martyrs were pulled on their backs. Hey! Namugongo had already been there a hundred years earlier. And when Mwanga, the Kapaka, was sentencing them, them to death, he said, take them to Namugongo. Take them to Namugongo. Tie them up and take them to Namugongo. Meaning that Namugongo was already in existence. So, and the following categories of people used to be to be killed there if a man struck a male youth failed to join the king on a raid exercise he would be killed not elsewhere but at namugongo two big chiefs and the princes if the kabaka said you must die. Those people would be killed not elsewhere but at Namugongo. Three. If the king said you are too bad to be killed elsewhere, then you would be taken to Namugongo. Those were mainly the three categories of people that used to be executed at Namugongo. The Uganda martyrs, then, we can say with certainty were considered too bad to be killed elsewhere. Namugongo was one of the then official execution sites in the Kingdom of Buganda and today it is a site under the jurisdiction of the Anglican Church. A characteristic of the execution site was burning people to death except for big chiefs and princes the big big chiefs and princes would be told bend down uh -huh. then one would hit on the neck well, you die then be thrown dead on the pile of fire among the catholics Mbaga Tuzinde was killed in this latter manner. Why? Because he had 
a blood link with Mukajanga, the chief executioner. So, Mbaga Tuzinde was not thrown alive on the fire, no. He was thrown dead on the fire because of that reason. And uh, uh, among the Protestants, we find, for example, Alexander Kadoko, for the same reason. There was Katikiro Wanalinya, as they used to call him. Iwan Nakabandwa, also. Why executed at Namugongo? We have just hinted upon that. Otherwise, if it were possible, all the martyrs would have been executed at Namugongo. But nine died at various other sites. Charles Rwanga was killed where the basilica at Namugongo is, and 12 others, including Kizito, at the age of 14, at the official execution site. Charles Rwanga was burnt to death where we have the basilica due to a grudge Senkole, the assistant executioner, had with him towards the end of 1884. What was the grudge? Senkole had refused to work under Ruanga during the excavation of the Kabakas Lake of Ndeva. So Charles Ruanga, a good leader like he was, tried as much as possible to convince Senkole to join the group because the Kabaka had said, let every capable man join you. Let every merry youth join you in the excavation exercise of the lake. And Senkole said, you, Charles Ruanga, you are only 23 and I'm 40 and you expect me to work under you? But Charles Ruanga used to remind him, but if the Kabaka says this, you cannot say the, uh, something contradictory. Ah, even though, until Charles Ruanga kind of got tired and he organized a meeting of op opinion leaders and uh, others, and what was the end? Senkole was found guilty and he was fined three calabashes of the local brew and a goat. For what? That was to be taken by those excavating the lake, definitely. Uh -huh. Senkole kept the grudge. Imagine it was in 1886. Now, as we are here, it was around there around where I am pointing, towards the Uganda Matters Secondary School, according to uh, Fopel, 1962, the African Holocaust, the story of the Uganda Matters. He said, Senkore pulled Chazruanga for about 50 yards. Those are how many meters? But okay, we caught him direct for about 50 yards to the place where he burnt Charles Ruanga from feet to head. Because it was there that the martyrs were brought from Namugongo Mukito, where Mukajanga had kept them, where he had a house, where he had a home, had kept them for 70 days. Ah. Now, enough firewood had been realized on the 2nd of June. They had begun, begun uh, collecting firewood from the 27th of May. On the 2nd of June, enough firewood had been realized. So, during the night, Mukajang and his men started. Meaning, tomorrow, wombs of mothers will have to cry on seeing their children dying. Not knowing that he himself, he too, he too, would shed blood. I mean, would shed tears. Why? 
Because when they, are, when they killed uh, the, the martyrs at the, the official execution site, remember one of, of the victims was a relative of his. He, 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 he cried, he had come back to his senses, seeing dead Mbaga to Zinde. Somebody exaggerated saying that tears made even his back cloth uh, very wet. <laughs> but that was on to, only to say that the man indeed died, I mean indeed cried very much. How can you make a back cloth uh, uh, so wet? But what is said can be understood. Now from Munyonyo to Namugongo. On the 22nd of February 1886, Mwanga the king had his palace at Mengo destroyed as a result of the explosion of his gunpowder store. Uh -huh. He fled to his prime minister's residence where we call Butikiro. Unfortunately, on the 24th of February 1886, thunder struck the residence. It was on that day that he fled to Munyonyo, where he had had a palace meant for entertainment purposes and resting. Because the king was still at Munyonyo in May 1886, the great persecution began from, from there, while the palace of Mengo was still being reconstructed. On the 25th of May 1886, King Mwanga II left for Bulingugwe Islands to hunt hippos, an entertainment exercise he used to do. But the game failed because no hippo availed itself to the site. Oh, he became angry, he became very furious. He shot at the geese instead to satisfy his anger and dumped them into his boat. Coming back, he loses his lovely gun in the Victoria. Oh, anger precipitated. Arriving at Mulungu on his way back to the palace, he found a weak doctor who had strategically positioned himself waiting for meat. Why? Because whenever the Kabaka went to Bulingugwe, his subjects would expect meat, meat from him. But this time, no meat. Then the weak doctor tells him, I know, I know why you are facing such, because we, we've always, we've time and again advised you, advised you to chase away those white men and kill the, the, the boys, our boys that are going to them for religious instructions said oh is that the case yes you will face more okay how have, have this said no that is not meat no oh, this 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 is geese meat mbata kabuzi ah a fateful evening the 25th of may 1886 the king arrived at the palace where nobody was to welcome him back. On his return, he used to find almost everybody happy to receive him with great pride. Densi Sebuguawo was one of those expected to receive him, but he was nowhere to be seen. To make matters worse, a one Kaigua by name told the furious and irritated Mwanga that he had seen dance with a son of the Prime Minister Mwafu proceeding towards Natete. Oh, they've gone to, the, to Kisule's place to learn religion. Am I your Kabaka or does the Buganda belong to the white men? Don't I provide enough meat for you at the palace or are the snakes you eat at the white men's place more palatable than the meat I provide. Uh -huh. For Pale, 1962, 
African Holocaust, the story of the Uganda Matters, page 139. Some time later, Sebugwawa and Mwafu came running. They had gone to rehearse their catechism lessons and prayer at Kisule's, their friend who had offered Christians place for the cause. The king picked up his sword, called him Wabutwa, giver of, of poison, beat then Sebugwawa on the head, neck and chest, until the sword broke in his hand. Dennis Sebugwao spent the night in confinement. Mudwaguma, a Protestant, castrated, it is said. James Buzabaliao, undressed and thrown in a prison, in a prison cell. Apollo Kagwa was brutally beaten up. <coughs> Nyonyi Ntono, a Catholic, was castrated. All that took place on the 25th of May, 1886, in the evening. Moses Mukasa, a Protestant, had means earlier been literally butchered at Mulungu. Remembering his catechism lessons, Charles Ruanga Ali, in the morning of the 26th of May, 1886, baptized Kizito. Ah. Kizito, Mbaga Javira, Mugaga, and the Kaloli Wedabe, who was not martyred. Aha. Uh -huh. And now, Kizito, the late Joseph Chagambidwa did us good to compose a song. Kizito Omuto, Omusomi, demonstrating what Shazwanga was to Kizito. Kizito Omuto, Yowange, Kizito Omusomi, Omwana, Wembuga, Gwembita. Kizito mwa karuo muganza simwa Gugumi na kuwembita Kizito mutayo wangi Mwana wimbu gagu embita Kizito mwagalu mkanza sima Kukumiena kubensuda Mwana waba kungu atalawa Kisulanga matobu tore nima Umepula lia katunda sabu Umemisa na nitu Petuli chivana ufe mjolo kubetini Zedi kukumia joke na tolindika Ah, that was a, to prepare Kizito for what might come ahead. And did it prepared him, and uh, when King Mwanga. He sentenced them to death. Charles Ruanga said, Kizito, let's move together. The Kabaka said, those who are for the white man's region over there, those who are still in their full senses, remain with me here. So Charles Ruanga stood, holding Kizito by the hand, and they shifted to that spot where the king had pointed at. But we see, he had prepared him. In other words, he was telling him, Kizito, when danger comes, don't give up. You do what I do. When I laugh, you laugh. Uh -huh. When I do this, you, when I sit down, you, you do the same. <clears throat> then, Kizito also later is shown, is illustrated as thanking Karoli Ruanga. Kaloli Rwanga, that is the kids to now. Kaloli Rwanga, oh no, Muruanyo Amani, Tomori no Mokabero, Mujasuweje, Kadonda Yevas Boro, no Watu a day, Akulim Bereje, Yabaruan Consi, Kaloli Rwanga, oh no, Muruanyo Amani, Tomori no Mokabero, Mujasuweje, 
Katonda ye bazibolo oyo gwatu wadde akulembere jeri eri abalwanyi kunsi atwe yagazo wa mumeganyi tumusimi olwe tutu mu mulwanyi lwanga atwe yagazo wa mumeganyi tumusimi olwe tutu mu mulwanyi lwanga abatu demwena banjulira omukuru wafe omuzira na mige oyo mukama gwatu sindikide akulire ntabalo za fe na lukalala atamege bwango Si tianze kaloli wali, na nyuera kaloli wali. Si tianze kaloli wali, na nyuera kaloli wali. Ha, now that is kizito. <laughs> kizito. Uh, like we've heard, he is telling everybody, this is our leader. Soon after the baptism, Mwanga II convened an urgent morning meeting during which he condemned both Catholics and Protestants and others to death. It was now that the journey from Munyonyo to Namugongo started because they were too bad, they were led to Namugongo, but several were killed on the way. They died in the following sequence. On the 26th of May, Den Sebuguao at the age of 16 at Munyonyo, Andrew Kagua at the age of 30 at Munyonyo, Ponsia Nungondre at the age of 35 at Kiamula, which at that time used to be called Tabat Taba. Later the place came to be called Nitakajunge. Not the Takajunge of Mokono, uh -uh, but the Takajunge which later turned into Kiamula. Why Tabat Taba? Taba is a pond, and they are used to be a, po a a permanent po pond of water. Hence the name Taba Taba. The letter Takajunge. Uh huh. Today we call it Kiamula. But some other people used to even call it Ewa Wonga Ewa Kulekana. Kulekana was a big, a big person in the area. There, near Kulekana's. Then on the 27th of May, 1886, at Nazi at the age of 20, at Nakivubo, Gonza Gagonza at the age of 24, at Rubao Naria, Mathias Murumba Kalemba at the age of 50, at Old Kampala, because he suffered from the 27th, to the th which was a Thursday during the week, to the, th uh, to the 30th of May, which was a Sunday. So he spent all, all those days in his suffering. Noah Mawagali at the age of 35 at Mitiana on the 31st of May 1886. Then on the 3rd of June, Charles Wanga at the age of 25 at Namugongo Psali. 12 others at the official execution site. Joseph Mukasabali Kudemba at the age of 15, 16, at the age of 16, on the 15th of November 1885 at Nakivubo, and John Mary Kiwanukamuzei Musoke eh, at the age of between 30 and 35, on the 27th of January 1887 at Jugula. This was the last martyr, because by the time the rest were killed, John Mary Kiwanukamuzei is said to have been on official duties, eh, official duties, away towards Tanzania towards Tanzania when he came back he was told hey, your friends eh, faced this and that said I should I should present myself too but the missionaries told him no reminding him of what he had promised on the day he was baptized on the 1st of November 1885 he made what you would call vows in a light sense, yeah. they were not vows strictly in, in the way we, we understood, we understand them today. But they are similar to vows that the religious made. One of them was, I will not do anything that needs permission from my superiors. So now after baptism, they reminded him, but do you remember what you said? We are, not, we are not allowing you to go. We are not allowing you to go. Until the time came when the mission said, okay, now, okay, you go. If you don't come back, then we shall know what the intention of the king is behind the words 
those who remained come so that I may give you plots of one land. Plots of land and wives. So he told them, uh, uh, then the mission said, well, don't, don't, until they allowed him. When he came back, he told them, Kabaka said I should go with the rest. That was on the 20, 26th. Kabaka told him, bring the rest also. It's 26th, he went back. Where are they? Ah! When he went back on the 27th, he didn't return. But remember, he first went to Narukolongo to celebrate Mass. And he received the Holy Communion. Then he courageously proceeded to the Kabaka's place. And he had his head, he was carried to that Date river. It was Date by then. And he had his head beheaded. He had his head cut off. And his body was thrown into the Jugula swamp. Kagolobia. Kagolobia, who had worked with another Matembe, and threw the body into the swamp. Genda no muziku! Meaning, go! Go with! Go, go with Omziku! Go with Omziku! Ha ha! Go! Were they married? Were they married? Of the 22 Uganda martyrs, only two were married. Matia Murumba Kalemba was married to Mary Kikuvembuga or Chikuwa or Chikuva in short. She was legally married to this one after sending away at least three others. The children of Matthias Murumba Kalemba with Chikuvembuga were Matia and Julia Balekate Baude. Matia, the son of Matia Murumba, or Matthias Murumba, was by the time of his father's death still a baby. She was baptized by Father Denoir in August 1886 and the following year, 1887. The daughter, Julia, the daughter of Matthias Murumba Kalemba and Maria Chikuvembuga went with the missionaries when they fled to Bukumbi, Tanzania for the second time in 1888. She went there to stay, but she was privileged to attend the beatification of his father in Rome on June the 6th, 1920. In Tanzania, Julia married Zaa, a Tanzanian. They begot two children before Zaha died in Lake Victoria, where he had gone fishing. Later, Julia married Cyrilo Ruta, who was a catechist and a village chief. And stayed on, they stayed on Wukereway Island. God blessed them with four children. The husband, unfortunately, died on the 20th of February. 1905 in Mwanza, where he had gone with us of an expected disease. What about Julia? Julia Valdekatebaude died on the 12th of January 1941 on Wukelewe Island after battling with poor health for two years. Her funeral was blessed with a number of mourners including priests. We can find this in Diba, 1969, Edinimu, Uganda, pages 104 to 105. And this is the f f volume, third volume of Diba. With the city roll, Julia gave birth to John Malima, Melania Masinga, Basil Mzira, Maltina Musindi. The second martyr that was married was Andrew or Andrea Kahua or Kagua, who was married to Mary Claire 
but today nakazibwe they too had two children one of them was maria aluonya born on the 14th of november 1885 and was baptized on the 15th of November 1885, the very day on which Joseph Makasabali Kudembe was martyred at Nakivo. It was a Sunday. Remember, the very first child in Uganda to be baptized was this, this daughter of Andrew Kagwa and his wife, Maria Chikuva. The very first child in Uganda to be baptized. This reminds us that the very first women to be baptized were baptized on the 19th of November 1885. Claire, with the wife of Andrea Kakwa, a one Monica and Eugenia Namirembe. But this one we are tackling was the very first child and a baby girl who was baptized on the day Joseph Makasabal Kudembe was martyred. Why no women is a, a big question. Why? Why no women? The king ordered, the king or, or instructed the executioners not to kill women, saying that women see men dying, they will give up. Otherwise, if, okay, if we had decided to kill the women, we would possibly be having many, many others. Aha. Uh -huh. Many. For example, Cecilia Narusiba in 1910 of Bisanje Parish Massacre Diocese in Uganda was butchered by a, 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 a man who attempted to seduce her to sex. Uh -huh. A woman Subika of Minyinya in 1906, Minyinya is today under Narozali Parish, was brutally or literally butchered by her husband, accusing her of continuing to believe in God. Like we find it in Semo Gerere, 1976, Wulambu Abajuli Soka, pages 225 to pages 226. But the husband who literally butchered her, the one Mwa Sanje, was later arrested and put here in Kampala. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. And we pray that we too borrow a leaf from the Uganda martyrs. Great. And you should ask God to bless us. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Father, for uh, this insightful and very, very rich information. It's Welcome. been really a very wonderful. Uh, and I think uh, the viewers out there have really enjoyed this 
have really gained something. You have known what the Uganda matters are or about because Father has clearly, clearly told us through the Uganda matters. And thank you very much for joining Ugandan Catholics online. I would like to thank Reverend Father Mukasa Mwonge uh, for leading us in this as Fort Potro Catholic Diocese leads this year's uh, celebration of the Uganda matters. Holy matters of Uganda. Pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we request for your blessing okay. so, so, so that the viewers and all of us Thank can you. receive the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ah. Thank you very much. Welcome.